This is episode 60 of the Life in Norway show. The EU's Erasmus programme has allowed more than 6 million students to study abroad since its creation in 1987. Every year, hundreds of students from all over Europe come to Norway on an Erasmus placement. Recently, one of those reached out to me simply to say hi and tell me about his experiences in Trondheim. I asked if we could share his story on the podcast and he agreed. If you've ever considered studying in Norway as a way to sample the lifestyle here, this is the show for you. You can find out more about today's show, including information on the Erasmus program on the show notes page at lifeinnorway.net slash podcast. Just look for episode 60. Happy listening. I'd like to welcome Kuhn Eshaus to the latest episode of the Life in Norway show. He's a bachelor student from the university in Groningen in the Netherlands, but is currently studying on an Erasmus Plus placement at NTNU here in Trondheim. Kuhn, welcome to the show. Yes, thank you. Thank you for having me. Let's uh, hear a little bit about what you're studying, first of all. Um, Yes, I study in the Netherlands uh, business administration, and I chose the track uh, supply chain management. Like uh, technology management, but it's about supply chain. And um, yeah, basically I finished my study already, like my bachelor's, and I'm only taking extra courses here in Trondheim. So yeah, that's what I what I study. And I, I take courses, introduction to Norway um, and to other economic courses. So it's not that busy, but it's, it's okay. So the Erasmus program, um, it's fairly well known within Europe, I think. I think most people will have heard of it, even if they're not actually sure what it is. And from my research, you know, I see this is a a multi-billion euro program funded by the EU um, with thousands of uh, higher education institutions from many, many countries, um, more than 35, I think, um, uh, one of which doesn't include Britain anymore, actually, mm-hmm. since Brexit, yeah. they actually True. withdrew from from Erasmus. So uh, we are we are one less country now. Um, now, I, I did read that around six million students have been a part of this since it was introduced in the eighties. So this is a, a really huge program of of student exchange uh, here in Europe. But why don't you tell us from your perspective what Erasmus actually is? Yeah. So. I think first of all, it's about the experience. Of course, it's, um, if you go on Erasmus, it's not because of the studies. Well, I mean, it depends, of course, on the student. But for me, at least, it's not for the studies since I already finished uh, more or less my bachelor's. So it's just about the experience being abroad, living on your own uh, in another country uh, with, uh, yeah, basically no friends unless you knew them from university already, but. Uh, yeah, so you 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 arrive in a new in a new town and need to make a lot of new friends, uh, and especially here in Trondheim, there are a lot of, not especially Trondheim, but um, in Norway there are several things you can do. Um, so yeah, being in the nature, um, do other stuff than uh, yeah study most of the time. Yeah, for me that's Erasmus. So you're here in Trondheim. Are you studying on modules with other Erasmus students from around Europe or are you mixed in with people studying full-time here at NTNU? Um, I think it depends on the course. For me, most of the students are exchange students as well um, since I, one course that I take is Introduction to Norway. So that's basically for exchange students. And uh, to other courses that I take, there are some Norwegians in there as well. Um, so I think it's not only for exchange students, but it's a mixture and de- depends on the course you take. Running a website about Norway as I do, I'm especially interested in what an introduction to Norway course at a university might consist of. Um, several parts. It started with some history, of course, um, about yeah, general things, uh, inhabitants, uh, stuff like that. Uh then there is some pil- politics, so the constitution, uh, the uh, the monarchy that is here in, in Norway. Uh, there are equality, that's an important concept in Norway. We talked about that as well. Family politics, uh, welfare state, so those kind of things that we, uh, that we learned, yeah. Excellent. Now, that kind of sums up nicely what an Erasmus placement is. Um, 
Why did you personally choose to take one and, and, and why did you choose Norway? Yeah, so before I started my bachelor's in, uh, in Groningen, um, I went to England, to York, and I spent there some months um, re- rebuilding a house for a month and then two months um, running it as a guest house. And during that time, I felt like, oh, whoa, living abroad is such an experience. And um, after that time, I returned to the Netherlands, started my study. But during my study, I knew that there was a chance for an exchange in the third year. So I wanted to do that together with my girlfriend. uh, And she hired me about Trondheim. So we applied both for Trondheim uh, last year, but due to COVID, it was cancelled. And then, yeah, her grades were not good enough. So we tried to apply this year for Helsinki, uh, but then my grades were not good enough. <laughs> so uh, in the end, I ended up in Trondheim, C in Helsinki. Uh, so yeah, basically C hyped me for Trondheim, but uh, yeah, in the end, uh, I did my own research and I'm quite glad that I'm here. It's due to the nature that we chose uh, Scandinavia, um, just to be a lot out outside, outdoor. Um, yeah, that's the reason. And we're not that far away from Helsinki here. No, it's just... A- two hours flight in total excellent so what was your first impression of norway and specifically trondheim when you arrived uh that it's quite hilly compared compared to the netherlands because um i knew a girl who lives here in trondheim uh, and i talked about uh buying a bike and then she said okay but keep in mind that it's quite hilly here so it won't be like in the netherlands where it's all flat and i thought okay but i used my bike quite often in the Netherlands, so I thought, okay, I will be uh, used to it. And then I came here and I, I went up from the city center up to Mohold by bike. And during the, during the, during the way, I, I thought, well, okay, she was right. It's, uh, <laughs> it's quite tough. Um, so yeah, just the landscape, uh, a lot of nature, the fjords, that was my first impression. I thought, yeah, well, it's, it's amazing. That's the reason why I came here as well. Um, and yeah, during my stay, we did some hikes, experienced more about nature. So yeah, just the landscape, my first imp- impression, the landscape was just amazing. I've only studied at university level in the UK. Um, I must actually be one of the only people living in Trondheim who hasn't studied here. It seems <laughs> that everyone has done a degree or or at least a course at NTNU uh, at, at, at some point. This is a real university town. Um, how does... NTNU compare with a Dutch university and I'm thinking here in terms of you know things like the teaching style uh, your your daily schedule are there more classes less classes are there any things like that that differ really stand out for you yeah I think maybe there are some differences but uh, since last one and a half year in the Netherlands we had just online lectures and we had here in Trondheim online lectures but also lectures on campus and so if i can compare the ones online i think they are just the same and the same amount of um of classes as well um back in the netherlands i had more group work but i think it depends on the study uh, you're in because my study was about group work as well which was involved quite a lot and here it's not that much but maybe it depends on the courses um and yeah, the classes online, uh, like on, on campus, I mean, I think they're a bit more interactive. Um, maybe it also depends on the course, I don't know. But the ones I had were a bit more interactive where you, where, like the teacher asks questions more frequently and um, tries to keep the interaction with the students. Um, so as far as I can tell, uh, that's maybe the biggest difference. But in the Netherlands, there were like... Um, working classes as well so not seminars but also working cl- uh, classes where you had uh, smaller groups and their interaction was there uh high as well so yeah maybe it depends on the course uh so regarding the the teaching structure the way of teaching I, yeah not that specific uh, differences but yeah that's just what i i know this may be a, a difficult question to answer given the state of the world over the last two years. Uh-huh. But what about the student life? Uh, how does that compare in the Netherlands to to here in Norway? Do you see a difference in terms of, you know, is, is one group of students uh, more keen on, on partying and or, or anything like that? 
Um, yeah, like back in the Netherlands, maybe it depends on the on the city I came from as well, because I know it's not everywhere in this in the in the Netherlands. But uh, back in Groningen, you could basically go every night out to a club, uh, and the clubs were opened until five six o'clock in the morning, which is not that common in the Netherlands. Um, and here, yeah, basically I only drink once a week, maybe due to the high prices. Uh, and what I noticed is that, especially during the introduction week and with UCA, uh, a lot of uh, a lot of students do drink quite a lot. Um, so they party a lot as well. Um, so except those weeks, I think there is the difference that the students in the Netherlands do party quite often. And the, for example, now, especially now when the, when the exam week is, it's so busy, even on Sundays, that's quite a difference, uh, compared to Netherlands. Cause when I went to the library on Sunday, it was not that busy, but when I go to the library now, it's, it's way busier than in the Netherlands. So I think, yeah, the difference that mm, due to the healthy reasons, uh, and the, the high prices, maybe the, the students are not partying that much uh but yeah it's only what i have seen maybe it, uh, it differs between students of course but as far as i have noticed yeah there uh, except for the weeks the introduction weeks and the uka uh yeah i think the the dutch people are maybe less serious than the norwegians interesting um now your time here in trondheim is almost at an end yeah, I will stay until 30th and then uh, I will be gone. Yeah. Okay, so possibly by the time you're hearing this podcast episode, Kuhn will be back in the Netherlands, who knows. But yeah. um, what happens next? What are your plans post-bachelor? Um, and also, has anything that you've experienced here in Trondheim changed those plans? Um, yeah, actually it did, because since for me and my girlfriend both we uh, experienced that it is just really nice to be uh, studying abroad and we are considering taking a master's in either Norway, Sweden uh, maybe Finland so at least somewhere in Scandinavia so that's what it changed for us um, and next half year uh, we will be traveling around since we both obtained our bachelor's hopefully at the end of the year and then just traveling around, uh, maybe Lapland, uh, maybe a skiing resort. That's what we want to do. And then hopefully back in September, studying our master's somewhere in Scandinavia. What is it about the northern countries that appeals to you both? Um, uh, at least like the tuition fee that is free most of the times. It, it was part of the decision as well. But just how everything is arranged... Um, part of the welfare state uh, which we like also the conditions for women which is quite important for my girlfriend of course uh, and maybe longer term but that's really long term if we stay after our masters because most of the times if you obtain a masters in a certain country you might stay there as well um, and in a longer term how everything is uh, settled for parental leave or stuff like that it's really really good it's not like it's not in the netherlands but Especially here in the Scandinavian and Nordic countries, it's uh, it's quite good. So that yeah, maybe part is uh, for the decision as well. Now I imagine a lot of the listeners to this specific episode will be students considering an Erasmus placement somewhere in in Europe, uh, possibly Norway. What advice would you give someone who is considering applying to come to Norway uh, on on the Erasmus program? That they definitely should do it. Um, that Erasmus is not just about partying a lot, uh, also about exploring the nature, especially if you go to Trondheim, because the, the nature is wonderful. Uh, there are a lot of things you can do. Go to Lofoten, for example, uh, uh, visiting Oslo, which I did as well. And I haven't been to other places like Bergen or uh, Tromsø, for example, which I want to go to as well. So if you go to Trondheim, uh, you should do it for the nature, for the for the parties you can go, of course, as well. But if you're only interested in drinking beer or stuff like that, maybe you should go to Eastern Europe where the prices are cheap. But if you want to be active on your Erasmus exchange as well and see a lot of things, then definitely go to Trondheim. 
That's great. Uh, Kun, I'm going to ask you the same three questions I ask every guest on the Life in Norway show. And because you're a a temporary uh, resident here in Norway, I'll be interested to hear what uh, you think the best thing about living here in Norway is. Um, Yeah, I would say the nearness to nature and that everyone enjoys being in nature. Like when we went for a hike on Sunday, for example, a lot of families were there with their children. Uh, Everyone enjoyed the nature so yeah i think that's it this sunday just gone when it was like minus 10 uh not this sunday right. no, <laughs> no, no 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 but we went ice skating for example and there are a lot of uh, small children at soul city and uh, yeah also they love it when it's minus 12 for example great and the most challenging thing about living here uh for me maybe the cold it is uh not as bad as for maybe Spanish people, for example. Uh, but I underestimated it a bit. It depends on where you live as well. I'm living in the center and the houses are not that good isolated. So it's pretty go- cold when I wake up. Um, so yeah, do not underestimate the cold, I would say. And your favorite place in Norway? Uh, I have been at the Lofoten, uh, which were quite impressive. We were there in September, so there was no snow yet, but we could uh, hike a lot, which we did. Um, yeah, I think I think that's one of the best places I've been. Uh, I mean, uh, I've been to Oslo as well, which is a nice city, and Trondheim, especially because it's like a real compact city, um, quite lovely as well. Um, but if I have to choose, I would say Lofos. Yeah, that's great, Kun. Thank you for joining us today. Um, where can people? follow you online and maybe ask a question or two do you have like a twitter or instagram or or something like that yeah i do have uh instagram i don't know my username but it will be something like kun s house or uh s house kun s house maybe uh and uh, i do have a linkedin profile so you can add me on that as well Right, and I will include uh, links to your uh, Instagram and LinkedIn in the show notes page, and you can find the show notes for today's episode with links to everything about NTNU here in Trondheim and the Erasmus program, as well as Cohen's social media links at lifeinnorway.net slash podcast, and you can look out for episode number 60. Cohen, thanks again. Yeah, thank you. (laughs) 